We are talking the jobs, economy, and industry in the state of Pennsylvania. Oh, and by the way, it's July, so we don't have a budget. For the record starts right now. Commonwealth's attorneys and I have concluded that the NCAA sanctions were overreaching and unlawful. Someone's got to bubble the product, you and I, I'm sure we're going to want to buy. The country needs a comprehensive energy. Good morning and welcome to this edition of For the Record. Pleased to be joined by Kathy Mandarino, the Secretary of Labor and Industry for the state of Pennsylvania. Secretary, thank you so much for being here. Andrew, pleasure to be here. You are on a, we won't call it a whirlwind tour throughout the state of Pennsylvania, but it's an important tour. You made a stop in State College. What, what did you talk about? Yeah. Well, um, the Wolf administration is very serious about the governor's vision for all of our state, and that's jobs that pay, schools that teach, and government that works. So I have been going around the state uh, talking to businesses and educators and folks who deliver employment and training across Pennsylvania, talking about what we need to get Pennsylvania's economy roaring on all uh, engines and to listen to them about what they need from state government to help support uh, growth of our Commonwealth. What do you see through throughout the state? You were in Wilkes-Barre, you were in Allentown, cities that are much different than State College with a major land-grant university, but at the same time, the Wilkes-Barre area, very much blue-collar, like much of central Pennsylvania. How, how are they all similar and yet different? Well, um, the, the, they, the reality of it is, yes, we all have our regional differences, but there's a lot of commonality. And what I'm hearing a lot from businesses are some really good ideas about how state government can help support them and some concerns that seem to kind of go across the state, concerns about um, our uh, skills gap. A lot of our uh, industries, particularly manufacturing in Pennsylvania, still has a lot of manufacturing and very importantly advanced manufacturing with the, which the governor really wants to help grow. And many of our workers in those industries are um, in their 50s and they're really looking at the pipeline of talent and saying we need to encourage younger people um, to realize that there are really good jobs, family sustaining jobs with good wages um, and, and that require some real talent uh, all across Pennsylvania in manufacturing and in our advanced manufacturing fields. So, How do you get today's youth, and maybe it's an issue with guidance counselors in school. There was this stigma of you have to, to be something, you have to go to a four-year college, you have to graduate with that degree, when oftentimes in today's economy, that four-year degree, you might end up working in retail and it not paying off, and now you're loaded with student debt. How, debt. how do you get the student to think, I'm just gonna go to a two-year tech school and I'm gonna come out with a high-paying job? Well, and, and those jobs are absolutely there. Um, I've been to a number of our career and technical schools, uh, they are graduating uh, folks with either certificates or associate degrees, and those folks are entering into jobs that are paying forty and fifty and sixty thousand dollars as their first job. But the reality of it is, I think Andrew is we all owe, owe a responsibility to our young people, and it really starts with with our families. You know, just recognizing, encouraging young people and what their talents are, and making helping them understand and helping ourselves understand that there's just not one track to success these days. You know, our grandparents' generation, most people got an eighth grade education, and my parents' generation, most people got a high school education, and my generation, most folks got a college education. But what we do know now is that we are all lifelong learners, and we're all going to keep having to train and upgrade our skills uh, regardless of where we start with uh, degrees or level of educational attainment. But what is missing, I think, is for many young people to realize that you can be bright, you can be smart, and if you're not necessarily uh, happy being a book learner, there's a lot of hands-on learning opportunities out there in our career and technical uh, trade schools, and that those are viable paths to good paying jobs. Do you think the career guide that for the first time in I believe it's been printed 25 or 28 years now has a middle school edition and a high school edition that now it's kind of getting the kids while they're younger and opening those doors up? I, I think we absolutely have learned that you have to get the kids while, while they're younger and that's why in the Wolf administration Governor Wolf is very, I mean he has married those principles, jobs that pay, schools that teach, uh, together purposefully. Um, he has organized his cabinet 
in work groups that make sense in terms of how the business world views us. So education and labor and industry are working very closely together. Um, we recognize that we to meet employers' needs, it starts back with the education system. And I think you're right, the educational uh, system is realizing um, career preparation doesn't start in your senior year of high school, and it doesn't even start in your freshman year in high school. It starts very early. And what's exciting to me as I've been traveling the state is many businesses are getting that too, and they're doing very unique and interesting things with even middle schoolers in terms of career exploration, inviting them uh, to their workplaces, doing fun kind of competitions about robotics or science or whatever to introduce them to what those industries do and really excite young minds and imaginations about um, you know what happens. And I think the other thing too is um, to me the success of our educational system is not the diploma. The success for our educational system is what you can do with that credential. So we need to be preparing folks not to get the diploma or the certificate. We need to prepare them for the jobs that are at the other end of that pipeline. One of the great questions at the luncheon was how can a university like Penn State bridge that gap with the employers in it? And it was brought up the, the company up in Erie. How can, how can that happen and how could labor and industry help that? Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you mentioned, we just came from the uh, luncheon of the uh, cha Chamber of uh, Commerce for uh, uh, Center County. We had a great dialogue with all the folks there. And um, there is a lot of connection going on around the state. Pennsylvania is very blessed to have a lot of institutes of higher education. And when I say higher education, I'm saying that in the most in inclusive way, whether it's uh, Penn State and it's uh, not only four-year degrees, but many advanced degree programs, of which I'm a, a, a proud Penn State grad, um, to the Penn College of Technology and lots of other. I met a, uh, the South Hills uh, t a Technical School is doing some great uh, technical skills training. But we have all of those, and we need to connect them and our employers and make the match. Always an interesting topic, and education is a big part of Governor Wolf's budget. We'll get into that next. We are talking with Secretary Kathy Mandarino here on WHVL's For the Record. Welcome back to For the Record, about to talk the budget. After all, it is July in the state of Pennsylvania. Secretary Kathy Mandarino of Labor and Industry is joining us here in studio and, se and secretary, one thing that I found interesting is that only 7% of your budget is actually coming out of state taxpayer money. Yeah, there's a lot that happens at the State Department of Labor and Industry, um, but much of our dollars either come in from uh, the federal government or from fees and premiums for some of the programs we administer. So uh, a billion dollar budget and 7% of it are, is only from the, from the state uh, coffers. Much of what we heard you talk about was the education. Obviously, education played a major role in the election of Governor Wolf. And like he said, he put forth a bold initiative in his budget, didn't, didn't pull any punches, and he went right at, at it, and I credit him for, for standing like that. And one thing is the $5 million additional in the vocational schools. A lot of people would say it's not needed, but actually, if you don't do that, you're actually leaving money on the table that's available. Yeah, let me put that in some context, too, because you're right. Governor Wolf came out with a bold initiative, and he absolutely uh, recognizes the numbers don't lie. Pennsylvania has a structural deficit, and we can't keep doing things the same way we've been doing them year after year after year, pasting Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid on top of Band-Aid with one-day fix. So that's why we are where we are with the budget. He is determined to put Pennsylvania's budget straight so that it can pr deliver the services and effective government that the people of Pennsylvania want. Number two, he absolutely is committed to education being a top priority. The state needs to take its top, its, its, its uh, mandate seriously that it is the primary funder of education and he wants to get that right too. Secondly, he wants government to be smart. And with regard to my department, as we mentioned just a minute ago, only 7% of my department is state dollars. But part of the state, uh, actually 50% of the state dollars I get in 
Department of Labor and Industry, go to my Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, which helps uh, people with disabilities uh, gain their independence and get into competitive employment themselves. It's about jobs for everybody. And at OVR, uh, when Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, when the state puts money on the table, they f draw down federal dollars. We were not putting all the money on the table we needed to get all the available federal do dollars. The governor's proposing an additional $5 million state spending at OVR, brings in another $17 million federal, $23 uh, million more at o Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, allows to serve a lot of people on the waiting list at OVR for services. Is education, is that going to be the end-all be-all with the budget in terms of the, the budget that the Republicans just passed and that Governor Wolf veto? Is there going to have to be some give and take on both sides of that to actually get it done? Well, you know, it's, again, the governor wants a budget that gets Pennsylvania on track. And he doesn't believe you'll get a budget that gets Pennsylvania on tra track if you're not serious about solving the structural deficit problem that we have. And one-time fixes don't work. So they, all sides are going to have to come together and figure out where you get sustaining revenue that are not one-time fixes, not one-time band-aids. And secondly, the biggest part of his agenda is to make sure that we're adequately funding education in Pennsylvania. And if you don't plug uh, the structural deficit problems in a way that are sustaining, you will never be able to address the educational needs of Pennsylvanians. To plug those problems, you obviously do need a tax base which does rely on businesses. In February, Governor of Florida Rick Scott said he was coming up here to take our jobs away. That's kind of a shot across the bow at Pennsylvanians. It's a shot across the bow at our, our government. How did Governor Wolf respond to that, well, and, that's, and what are you doing? Well, that's pretty rhetoric, but, but let's be real. The governor's budget proposal um, actually had a lot of good news in there for Pennsylvania businesses. Um, he is talking about totally getting rid of the uh, uh, corporate net income tax, and that's been something that's been on the agenda for years and years and years, and it's something that's made an unlevel playing field uh, for, for Pennsylvania businesses, and something that has uh, detracted from bigger companies coming to Pennsylvania. And that's a number one thing that's kind of a shot right back at the bow of those uh, who, who think that, that they can steal uh, our jobs. The reality of it is, is we have a really good workforce here in Pennsylvania. We need to take advantage of that workforce. We need the job opportunities and the training opportunities here for Pennsylvanians. We not only want Pennsylvania to be a state where we are uh, maintaining our, our, our um, a workforce for our current um, and job base for our current citizens. We want our young people to stay, and quite frankly, we want to be a net importer of jobs in Pennsylvania and really grow this state with the uh, great businesses, the great universities we have, and the great talent that we have in our Commonwealth. Do you think that maybe our job market has to diversify a little bit? And what I get at is, there's over 1.2 million jobs in the state in just two industries, education and healthcare. Do you think maybe we have to somehow kind of swing back into manufacturing a little bit more than maybe the service economy that we're kind of stuck in right now? Yeah, I, and I'm not quite sure. You make a really good point, and EDS and MEDS is a very strong industry uh, for Pennsylvania, not only in central Pennsylvania here and in the southeast and in the southwest. But the reality of it is, as I've been making my tour, we have... Uh, still a very strong uh, manufacturing base in Pennsylvania. And part of the governor's initiatives in the budget is to help grow that manufacturing base, support our industry sectors, grow our advanced manufacturing, marry our institutes of higher education and our community colleges with our businesses to make sure that they have what they need. Another thing the governor's proposed in the budget is an infusion uh, into my department of $10 million for the industry partnerships program that really helps those industries work with their like uh, businesses in like sectors to meet their common needs, get the training to upgrade their current workforce, their incumbent workforce, so they're always staying cutting edge and open up those entry level jobs for younger people. The internship, or the partnership that you that you just brought up, how can that say, maybe people don't see the immediate impacts, but down the road, what, what, 
do you think would come out of that? Well, actually, we've been doing it on a much smaller scale for a number of years in Pennsylvania. And you see both some immediate and some long-term impacts. Immediately, you see increased uh, wages and increased productivity, and in the long run, you see uh, growing those businesses and more jobs and more, more um, revenue for those companies. You are watching WHVL's For the Record, back with more right after this. Welcome back to For the Record. Secretary Kathy Mandarino of Labor and Industry for the state of Pennsylvania in the studio right now. And Secretary, getting into some unemployment numbers, Pennsylvania right now at 5.4%, the national at 5.5%. Not necessarily, everything's not in the number, even though it went up a tenth of a point. There's much more to the numbers than just that. Yeah. Um, first of all, I think it's, it's good news for the nation that the unemployment rate is, is coming down, and Pennsylvania's too. We're kind of trending um, the, the national. We've been a few points, a few tenths of a point below it. Center County actually under 5%, um, although in all of those numbers, like you said, there's a lot more to it. Um, in recent months, we've seen a slight uptick in the percentage, the unemployment rate as calculated, but we've also seen an uptake in the number of jobs in Pennsylvania. So economy grows, more jobs available, more folks coming out of uh, the woodwork who maybe not had been in the labor force or dropped out of the labor force. And so that's why while jobs grow, unemployment rate could be ticking up slightly too. One of the things we talked about, again, mentioning that I was at the um, Chamber of Commerce earlier this morning, and we talked about um, the underemployment and the fact that a lot of areas, Center County included, um, might have folks un underemployed. And that's a real challenge for all of our economies. And again, that's why Governor Wolf is very um, focused on jobs that pay for Pennsylvanians, because he really wants people to have good paying jobs. And we have to make sure that folks not only have a job, but a job that has family sustaining wages and that they can raise their family on. Where could people go who say are maybe middle-aged and has lost their job and they're saying, well, I'm not qualified for this, I'm not qualified for that. But like you just mentioned, there is underemployment all around yeah. the state of Pennsylvania. One of the things I would encourage folks uh, and a couple of options that come through our department, uh, in terms of physical locations, we have 65, 66 career links around the state. Uh, the one here in Center County I visited this morning, it's in Belfont. So that's actually a physical location that you can go in, a Pennsylvania career link. They have all kinds of job resources. They have listings of all the jobs, uh, et cetera. Um, on your computer at home or in the, in, in the library or public place, you have access to a computer. Uh, Pennsylvania operates uh, Job Gateway. And if you just Google Job Gateway, you'll find uh, the Pennsylvania Job Gateway. It's a portal to all kinds of jobs. It's not only active listings of Pennsylvania employers, but it draws from a lot of sources. So you don't have to go to monster.com and this place and that place, but because uh, the um, Labor and Industry Job Gateway site is pulling all of that information together from those sources as well as from direct um, notices that we get from employers and you can really focus it on this is the location I'm looking for a job, this is the kind of job I'm looking for. If I can, there's uh, other things on Job Gateway that I'd really encourage all the way down to middle schoolers. Families, check out Job Gateway. There are career uh, exploration uh, tapes on there, give you an idea about what what, it, what a certain job is like, what kind of skills and education it takes, what those jobs kind of pay. And that leads us right into, Andrew, what we had been talking mm -hmm. about a little bit earlier about what are those careers out there? And a lot of times people don't realize the kinds of careers out there where you can make uh, good money and that uh, you need to be talented, you need to have skills, you need to study hard when you're in school, but you don't necessarily need to go to four-year college for some really good paying jobs in uh, industry and manufacturing and technology. And one of those jobs is truck driving and maybe people, young people think there's a stigma to it, but the world needs truck drivers. Freight industry is up 4.7% this year over last year's number. They all can't come on Boeing 747s and get dropped off at your nearest Walmart. And even the, the fracking industry, the natural gas industry, they need, they need truckers as well. Schools I, like that, I don't mean to, to jump in there, but ahead. schools like CPI, that offer welding and diesel technician and even just the truck driving schools. How, how important are they? They are critically important to our economy. And again, like we said, some really good paying jobs. I visited uh, Thaddeus Stevens School of Technology. That's in South Central PA. 
Um, I'm going to get up to the, I've been in the past to the, um, uh, the uh, Penn um, Tech up here. And uh, they are preparing folks for real jobs and employers standing in line waiting for those jobs. When I was at Thaddeus Stevens the other week, uh, we were talking about their uh, technical training. Uh, some folks that came straight out of high school, some that came second career, some that had four-year degrees couldn't find a job and, and came there. And after getting their technical career, they have four and five job offers from employers at good paying wages. So. Um, Manufacturing today, I mean, I've, I've toured recently uh, uh, medical equipment manufacturing uh, plants to dog food manufacturing plants, and you know what? They're not yesterday's factories either. They are clean. They are high tech. Uh, they require a smart, educated, and talented workforce. A lot of uh, need in all of those industries for the mechanical trades, and there really is a lot of opportunity for folks and pointing them back to Job Gateway. Um, young people can go on that website and really see uh, whether or not they have the interest, the aptitude, um, and see what these jobs are like. One good thing in, in the last 90 seconds is the workman's comp insurance rate. It was cut down again, 5.99%, uh, I believe, and I believe it's gonna save the state $140 million, but yet it's important for workers, the benefits are still gonna be there. Yes, absolutely. The Workers' Comp Rating Bureau is an independent bureau. It's not my department. They track the trends, and when you see the unemployment compensation premium rates going down for employers, that means a lot of things. That means uh, there's good occupational safety. People are not getting hurt. If they're getting hurt, we have good health care and good rehabilitation services, and people are getting rehabilitated and getting back to work, and it's saving businesses uh, money, and it's keeping workers safe and that's a win-win for everybody. In the last 45 seconds, over the course of the next four years, what is your number one main initiative and the goal that's true to your heart that you want to get done? Jobs that pay, schools that teach, and government that works, Governor Wolf's vision fits perfectly with the Department of Labor and Industry. And from my point of view, our role in making sure that jobs that pay for Pennsylvanians is a critical mission one for the Department of Labor and Industry. Secretary, thank you so much for being here and taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching at home. This was WHBL's For the Record. Enjoy the rest of your day.